Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Okay, today is Sunday, March 15, 2020. I just have this feeling, I don't claim to be a prophet or anything, but uh, I have this feeling I'm not going to be online for much longer. I think they're going to pull the plug on this coronavirus thing, and I think we're going to be in a heap of trouble. I haven't decided if it's real or not yet, but uh, it could be. If the news coming out of Iran uh, unofficially is true, they're having a lot of dead people. So I don't know. Honestly, don't know. I guess time will tell, but... Uh, you know, if, if uh, we meet a bunch of uh, we meet a bunch of church people and the patriots in a camp, well, it's going to be our job to tell the church people how they were lied to about pre-trib rapture and all these other things, and uh, about who are the chosen people and who are not. So, uh, you know, that's that's going to be our job. Unless the Lord leads us to another place in another way. I'm stuck here in South Florida. Not what I was planning on doing. But I guess the Lord has other plans. So, what can I tell you? So, just an, that's just kind of an update. Uh, they're already talking about nationwide travel restrictions. I'm like, what does that mean? Does that mean they're going to put uh, National Guard on the interstates and have people uh, keep them from traveling? I mean, they're already messing up with the uh, airlines, making people wait hours and hours to get screened. Personally, I don't think this is any worse than anything else I've ever seen. Uh, you know, it's just funny. Um, I'm in my mid 60s, and uh, hey, I've never seen I've never seen such a big fuss over anything. Matter of fact, in the late 70s, there was the thing called the swine flu. More people died from the vaccine and were paralyzed than uh, from the flu itself. Go figure. And uh, that was when the vaccine manufacturers, take a guess who owns them, decided to get Congress to pass a law that they're exempt from lawsuits. Now, if you can't be sued, how is it in your best interest to ensure safety? I mean, let's face it. If you can't be sued, do you really care about safety? I mean, if especially when it costs you money, you know? So, you know, think about that. But, uh, yeah, if we go under a couple months lockdown, think about it. Um, you know, if Hillary would have won and said that we're going under martial law, patriots would rise up and fight. But because it's tr Trump, oh, he's our buddy. He's on our side, right? That's what we keep hearing. He's one of us. Yeah, right. But if he does it, well, then they'll stand around and cheer him. You know, he's, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I just know the Lord's in control. And uh, we may not like what's coming. But just remember something. A couple things here. In 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 17, we read, For the time has come. That judgment, that judgment must begin at the house of God. 
And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? People don't realize it. Nobody likes judgment. You know, just like uh, parents spanking their kids when they, you know, for example, uh, they live on a street. Kid doesn't look both ways for cars coming and just runs across the street. You spank their little behind. Nobody likes to get their behind spanked, but, you know, things are done for our good. In Deuteronomy 8 and verse 5, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that, as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Oh yeah. God the Father will chasten us. Or spanking. I'm an expert on that. Believe me, I am. In... Uh, Psalms 118 and verse 18, Psalms 118 and 18, the Lord hath chastened me sore. Boy, I could, I, could have, I could have written this. But he hath not given me over unto death. Proverbs 3.11, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, Neither be weary of his correction. 1 Corinthians 11.32 But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Hebrews 12.16 For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye, re, if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth, chasteneth not? In Revelation 3 and verse 19, Jesus speaking, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Ah. You know, people, this plague, if it's real, I'm not sure yet if it is or not, um, could be, well, if it's used... If it's not real and it's only being used to impose martial law, that's one thing. But if it is real and has been unleashed upon the population for population reduction, just remember, the Lord's allowing this to happen. And the thing is, persecution will wake up the church. Oh, sure, you'll have the 700 Club and the TBN people, and I rebukes this plague in uh, Jesus' name. Uh, praise of the, the Lord. Uh, uh, oh, and here, here's our address to send a tithe. Yeah. Well, you know what? Those people will have their reward. Paul writes in... 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And people, I am indeed a hypocrite. I know it. It's easier to teach this stuff than to live it. Trust me. Ah. So. In 2 Timothy 3.12, 
Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Ah. Listen to this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves. Oh boy. Has America, have we remained long in the land and corrupted ourselves? Is sodomy marriage allowed? Is abortion allowed? Oh, yeah. And shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything. What's television? Aren't those graven images? And make a graven image or the likeness of anything and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day and that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear, nor eat nor smell. But, ah, here we go, but, if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, that's trouble, people. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, latter that means the last days people even in the last days if thou turn to the lord thy god and shall be obedient unto his voice for the lord thy god is a merciful god he will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which ye swear unto them Huh. How's that for a uh, something uh, to remember, huh? In John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Acts 14, 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we much and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. You know what, people? Let me tell you something. When people have to start dying for their faith, there's going to be revival. Now, it's going to be a remnant, very, very small remnant. I'm fairly sure. I would like to be wrong. I'd like to be see great numbers of our people. But... I don't think so. They've been so brainwashed by the demon nominational churches. Well, it's just... 
they're going to lie. And, you know, especially those that never bothered to pick up the Bible and read it. You know, almost every household in this country has a copy of the Bible. Pretty sure. I mean, you know, if there's... There might be 300 million copies of the Bible in this country laying around people's houses, and nobody bothers to read it. Jesus warned that there'd be wolves in sheep's clothing. He was, they were warned that there'd be false apostles, that there'd be false prophets. They were warned over and over and over but people don't pay any heed to that. They, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. So, persecution's going to wake up the true remnant church. There will be a revival. All right, let's take a look at Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 10. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. So when we're, if, if, if it's our lot in life to be taken into captivity, put in jail or a camp for your faith in Christ, and you're taken up before the, the council to be tried, and think about this, people. If you're being tried and they're looking for evidence that you're a Christian, is there going to be enough evidence to convict you? <laughs> I, I hope they find enough evidence that I'm a Christian to convict me. But we're supposed to keep our mouths shut. And the Lord will send the Holy Spirit to speak through us. It won't be you speaking. It'll be the Lord himself speaking through us if that's our lot in life. That, my friends, is going to be proof of your salvation. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. And brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. Look up the Noahide laws, people. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. The Noahide laws are in the Bible in, oh, I don't know, the book of John, chapter 66 in verse 6. Yeah, John 666. I'm kidding. The Noahide laws exist in the Bible nowhere. They only exist in the minds of Antichrist rabbis who hate Jesus. Read those Noahide laws and realize those laws were written by people that hate Jesus. Law number one, blasphemy against the Lord. 
believing that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, to them is blasphemy against the Lord. Penalty? Death. Method of execution? Beheading. Where have I read that before? Ah, Book of Revelation, people. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated, hated of all men for my name's sake. They already hate the name of Jesus. That's why they call him Yeshua, because they hate the name of Jesus. I don't believe any of them. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What? We got to endure to the end to be saved? Why, I was told to say a little 30-second sinner's prayer, and then I'm, you know, once saved, always saved, and eternal security, and then no matter what I do, I'm a saved. Praise the Jesus. Uh, well, Jesus says that we have to endure to the end. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I come unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Very interesting. They accused Jesus of casting out devils by the prince of the devils, Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. Now in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those that witness for Jesus are going to be beheaded, possibly, and the word of God. These are they that don't worship the beast, neither the image nor take the mark of the beast. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's only the introduction, people. A thousand years, that's the introduction. That's it. You know, people don't realize it, but, you know, eternal life is quite a gift. And the Lord knows that if you endure suffering in this life and keep the faith that, you know, you've, you, you're going to prove to yourself that you are either worthy or unworthy for eternal life. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to fall away. All these church people... I honestly doubt that three people out of a hundred will die for the faith of these people that are attending these churches today. These mega churches, I doubt if there's going to be three in a thousand. Some of these mega churches have got 20,000 members. I've been to one of them. Ugh, I got invited to church. Little did I know it was going to be a mega church. Calvary Chapel place was huge absolutely huge it took me 15 minutes just to find my car and i knew approximately where it was it's insane i mean i sat through the sermon and i thought you know if i was the devil himself i would not be offended at the sermon they teached 
Of course, that was after listening to rock and roll music, which I used to like rock and roll when I was a kid, but I can't stomach that filth anymore. I mean, really? Now, in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Well, this might, uh, this might include having to love not our lives unto death. In Revelation 12 and 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And they loved not their lives unto the death. In Mark 8.35, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, whose sake? Jesus' sake. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. All right, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14, uh, but just remember this. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, comes first before Christ does. All these pre-trib churches are going to, well, let's just say that it's going to be proven over time that they are all false prophets. When you teach something as a prophecy, as fact, and it ends up being not true, that is proof that you are a false prophet. Doesn't matter if you're deceived. Doesn't matter if you made a mistake. You're a false prophet. So... Keep that in mind. And oh, by the way, in the Old Testament, uh, when somebody did a false prophecy and said, Thus saith the Lord, um, the people were within their rights to stone them, stone them to death. Keep that in mind. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the gospel, people. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And we're not talking about people getting eight hours. No, we're talking about the dead. Even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, wait a minute. I thought that was a secret pre-trib rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, not Donald, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. If you're not caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, it's the wrong Christ, the wrong Messiah. Very important, people. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. All right, well, that's this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12, 
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Stay close to Jesus, people. I have a feeling the ride is going to get very, very bumpy. I have a feeling there's going to be some people having to pay for their lives, uh, pay for their faith with their lives. So, you know, the Bible talks about counting the cost. Think about it. Do you love your life more than you love Jesus? Think about it, people. Think about it. The demon nominational church world? No. No way. They love, they love the praise of men. And uh, we'll see what happens. But there will be revival. Persecution is going to be a good thing. Trust me, it will be. And like I say, I'm a hypocrite. I'm not looking forward to it. Believe me. But uh, what can I say? All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the only the only begotten Son, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, all glory and honor to them. In Jesus' name, amen.